Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Let me take you back to 1991. I'm nine years old. I'm crazy about tennis. I'm, uh, I'm already beginning to be a true tennis nerd. Uh, I'm not testing rackets back then because I can't afford a lot of rackets or my mom can't afford a lot of rackets. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of shadow swings and hitting old ladies in the in the stomach in the street because I'm just swinging around kind of imagining tennis matches as I was walking around the streets of my hometown in Sweden so uh, that was that was weird I love tennis I watched a lot of tennis and I watched Michael Stick uh, win Wimbledon uh, kind of always hoped for my idol Stefan Edberg they had a similar style it was all kind of get to the net finish the point with a nice volley Good serve was important, but also a serve that actually you could get behind. So uh, Michael Stick had a nice serve, but they all had kind of, like Edberg is not the most powerful serve, but good kick, so he has time to get close to the net and, and kill off the volley. They didn't have the same pace, they didn't have the same rackets, the same strings, head sizes were smaller, courts were faster, balls were a bit different too. Uh, it was all of a bit of a different game. The trajectory of the ball was faster and, uh, and harder and flatter. But uh, today it's all about spin and it requires more kind of physicality. L l rallies are generally longer and harder and more grueling on the body. So they need like a whole team of, of physios. I mean, they had help back then as well, but it's, it's become different uh, with the whole entourage that a top player needs to stay in shape and to stay healthy and you probably see the injuries increase quite a bit. So tennis is, like most other sports, become increasingly physical and developed over the years. But sometimes I get nostalgic going back to those days in the 90s. Uh, I was playing tennis uh, but I had a pretty lousy coach and I just lost my appetite um, with tennis. So I, I you know, moved over to chess and had a lot of success uh, as a chess player. and and won the Swedish championships for my age and, uh, and uh, junior tournaments and uh, moved over to the international level and played there up until I was kind of 20. And that's when I kind of started going back into tennis again. And I, I left kind of slowly, slowly, faded away a bit from, from chess and, and came more and more back into tennis. Although I'd played some tennis, but not much over the years. And uh, yeah, and as, as you know, uh, that there was when it started, I, I then became crazy about tennis again and, uh, and that's when Tennis Nerd happened and it's been going on for a while now. I don't come from a tennis family, I have no really tennis background, I know a lot of tennis players, they, both their parents play tennis and they were tennis coaches or good tennis players and, and that's how their kid got into tennis and for me it wasn't like that at all. Uh, my my um, you know, father and on that side of the family they were wrestlers so kind of my uncle is an Olympic wrestler uh, so that's a completely different thing from, uh, from tennis. But that's a tangent going back. I mean, Sweden was uh, a huge tennis nation with a lot of good players, but Edberg was one, my idol. I really watched a lot of Stefan Edberg matches. Uh, and then Stig came with this racket, the Fisher Vacuum Pro 90. Uh, a really old school frame. Uh, Fisher made some really excellent frames back then. And for a while they had their zero tolerance policy where, the, where they promised that the rackets would be win, within two grams and, and uh, some balance points uh, requirements as well, uh, which I haven't seen since and, and the tennis industry needs to kind of get back in two because I think there's, there's too much leeway on, on bad quality control today and that uh, creates a, a substandard product where you feel like you're, you're, uh, you're buying something that is not according to specs uh, of, of uh, what it's advertised as. But uh, that's about that. This is a 90 square inch with a 19 millimeter beam, 1619 pattern, 31 centimeter balance approx and 330 grams. It's a typical old school frame from the 90s, kind of like a prestige classic Pro Staff 85, those legendary frames. Great feel. It's all about the volleys. It's all about getting that connection to the ball and being able to hit flat. As you can see, this racket is uh, very elongated. So the sweet spot is more on this kind of side and not so much here. So if you hit outside the center, which I noticed when playing with this frame, uh, you are punished immediately and your ball is going to be thwop and uh, bounce into the court. But uh, if you keep hitting in the center of the sweet spot, you, it's very sweet. Um, it's a sweet, sweet spot and it feels great. Uh, it's a buttery frame, thanks in partly to the kind of ceramic layup. I like these kind of fiberglass ceramic layups that they had back in the 90s and 2000s. Just really nice, softer feel. Apparently, they're not as durable as just pure graphite carbon, but it's, uh, it creates a really nice connection to the ball, which I talk about a lot. And that's why I like the Babla Soft Drive, because it has fiberglass in the layup. 
uh, old school guy like old school stuff but i appreciate also the modern tennis world but uh, yeah this is a legend really enjoy playing with it now gonna keep playing with it a bit more but it's not forgiving i did struggle uh, to get good depth and good pace and good spin on my shots at times but when I hit the ball well, when I prepared well, uh, it, was, uh, it was really nice. And it's uh, still a beauty uh, with its uh, colorway. Just a fantastic uh, looking frame in many ways. And it plays great too. So if you have tried this, please comment below. Thought of adding just a few comments uh, with some footage. Uh, yeah, so small sweet spot. You need to make sure you hit well in front and uh, your footwork is great, which is not in my case. So uh, you sometimes need to improvise. Uh, I can move well for a certain period of time and then I get a bit tired and and things start to unravel a little bit. Uh, that ha I have a tendency to do that. But the, these frames, the mid-size frames, they are a lot of fun to play. They whip through the air really quickly. Uh, that's a big benefit of a mid-size frame. Uh, so it's not that difficult to create top spin on the ball because you can really whip through the ball, so it's really fast. The sweet spot is mainly the issue and the power level. You're not going to get a lot of free power. And the sweet spot is small, particularly small with this one, even smaller than the Prestige Classic, for example. Uh, which has a, a pretty nice sized sweet spot for a 89.5 square inch racket. Same with the Pro Staff 90, uh, the, the famous Fed one. Uh, also has a bit bigger sweet spot than this one. But uh, usually the rackets with smaller sweet spots, when you hit it in the middle of the string bed or where the sweet spot is, uh, it feels great. And that's also the case with this racket. A lot of fun to hit and uh, not that easy to, um, to win points against better players with you really need so to play super aggressive and make sure you get to the net uh, sadly my service footage with this frame uh, got uh, deleted uh, by mistake so i don't have any of that it does serve okay it's not really serving a big ball unless you're a great server uh, and i'm not so so it was not an easy racket to serve with uh, i know some frames when you play with for example with an extended yonex that, that's a great serving tool or we a pure drive plus and so on so you know that directly that this would be a good serving racket these mid-size frames are pretty fast you can whip the ball but uh, you need to generate the pace yourself through that maneuverability but very nice frame uh, if you can try these old legends you should uh, i will do more of these uh, old radicals and so on in coming weeks so Keep your eyes posted if you like classic frames. Uh, if you don't, I just do them occasionally, so don't worry about that. So hopefully now that things open up, we can travel a bit more and uh, I can create other types of content, uh, meet other players, travel around and, uh, and see tournaments and, and so on. Uh, maybe it's next year, but, but hopefully soon. I also hope to, to set up more of a, a, a better recording setup uh, in moving house quite soon. So uh, hopefully that's gonna be a bit better, a bit more interesting better sound hopefully and i'm gonna try to put more effort into uh, the sound proofing because in malta it's a lot of stone and glass and and noise so you need to to really figure that out but i hope i can get better um, production quality and production levels thanks to all of you who support tennis nerd who, who like the stuff i do who subscribe and and so on if you want to uh, get more and more content you join patreon uh, it also helps me to you know have money to go traveling and or buy gear and test gear and, and so on so i really appreciate that helps me create more more and better content and uh, if you want to send a donation instead of patreon that's also fine uh, there's paypal information and a button on tennisner.net to check in the venues uh, and um, if you want to support uh, via buying something through my affiliate links they're in the description below just check these out. For example, you're buying a racket from Tennis Warehouse, you already planned it. You can use my link at no cost to you and it sends a small commission that makes a difference to Tennis Nerd. And uh, for that, I say big thanks. Uh, I'm fortunate to work with something that is my passion and uh, I don't make as much money as I did in my previous jobs, to be 100% honest, but uh, I have a lot more fun and I feel a lot more engaged in this stuff. So. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and your support and uh, I hope to see you soon. I know I get some invites to come and play with, uh, with watchers of the YouTube channel and I love that stuff. Uh, I would love to meet a lot of you and, and record videos and, and meet Tennis Nerd worldwide. So let's hope when we get out of this crap that we, uh, we can meet up and, uh, and do some nice content and hit some tennis balls and have a beer afterwards. That would be fantastic. That's all for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.